you know, it may be nothing, it may be, <laughs> maybe everything. Okay, are you doing good? Yeah. 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 Well, excited. You are at Dina Wakely Media. I'm excited to show you what I have new. I have a happy clap thing. <laughs> happy clap, happy clap. Uh, that I'm excited to show you this year. So this is my new book. Um, this came out in November, so that it could hit the Christmas time market. North Light Publishing publishes my books. Um, that's my second book. And Ranger will carry that book. So if you're a store and you think, oh, where do I get it? I get that question all the time. Um, Ranger will carry that so you can get it from Ranger. So I'm super excited about that. I have new stamps and stencils, of course, because that's scrapbook and craft crack. <laughs> you have a little bit and you feel good for a while and then you need more, right? So we'll never, never stop with those. So we have new stamps and stencils. We, I did another little scribbly bird set because the birds are so popular. Um, this is based on my fun foam stamp technique, which I teach in class all the time. And there's some that I just would make over and over and over and they don't last that long. And so I wanted them in rubber. Um, more women because I can't get enough of them. This one I did for card makers, but it's also good for all kinds of craft applications. I've been using it on my journal pages too. I started scrapbooking in 1995. Uh, I got a package of Sherbet Bright's cardstock for Christmas. Sherbet Brights. Sherbet Brights. No. Oh my gosh. Yes, and one big pen is what I got for Christmas. <laughs> I'm in a blue binder. And that started this all, this whole thing rolling. And then I discovered stamping in about 97. And so I've been making cards for a long, long time. And I just wanted to have a little card making set because the, the you can do a background, stamp that heart on it. You can even put it on pattern paper if you wanted. And then the phrases go right inside the heart. So how simple and easy, right? And then I wanted to do some flowers. There's lots of people that love to color. Coloring is a very zen thing, right? It puts you in your happy place. So some flowers as well. I, those are for my mother-in-law cards. <laughs> like, oh, my mother-in-law's birthday. I uh -huh. use those for her birthday cards, okay? Nice. So my acrylic paint, we have a couple new colors. Um, my paint was announced last show, but it didn't really hit your store till when? right <laughs> so it took a little while for us to get it out the door because I needed it perfect and I'm a little picky um, and so it is fantastic paint so for this show we did metallics because metallics are everywhere they're hot they're in every booth right so we have um, sterling gilt Diane said I should have called it G-U-I-L-T <laughs> that would have been awesome <laughs> wouldn't it um, and then I have penny which is the the copper and then we added a black I didn't do black last time because I don't use a lot of black paint I use little I mostly use this color which is night which is my very dark baby okay so but we added black because people were just like why don't you have black and you're like oh, okay <laughs> you're right we need to add that so we added black as well and again my paint is heavy body I like a heavy body right it it will hold its peak so if you look at the paint on this little plate see the little that looks like a little Hershey's kiss right there doesn't it that's how it came out of the tube and it will dry like that it will hold its peak it will hold its texture it will hold its brush stroke that is what my paint does that's why it's heavy body because of that it doesn't have a lot of water in it and it dries out something fierce so that's why it's in a tube so it doesn't dry out quite as bad now if, if it frustrates you and you need your paint to be open longer that's you know chemical talk for wet longer. Um, we've developed a glazing medium this show. This is my little prototype glazing medium. And so the glazing medium, you mix it with the paint, it will make it, it will make it more transparent and it will make it stay open longer. So if you're a jelly printer, if you uh, are doing anything where you just don't want it to dry in three minutes, um, you can add a little bit of glazing medium. Now why not add a little water? It'll break apart the acrylic it, resin. It will in there. sometimes break the paint. So, have you ever added so much paint or water to paint that it looks like watery? It looks like it looks like it looks like your paint water instead of loose, pretty watercolor. Like it, it, it dilutes the pigment, right? Whereas this will help that not to happen. It really won't break the paint. You know, I find I can add a small amount of water to my paint, not a problem at all. Um, but if you really want it thin, thin, if you want to do a real thin glaze, then it just looks like watery something icky, right? So this will help that if you, if you really do need it to be thin, okay? A little water, a-okay, a lot, turn to the glazing medium. That makes sense? So the happy clap thing, darlings, is the fine line tip, okay? So when you're a mixed media person like we are, we're in the cult, <laughs> right? Um, we don't just paint on our work, what do we, what do we put on it? The answer is yes. So the whole store, the whole store throws up on what we do. We have tissue with gel medium. We have crayon. 
I'm obsessed with crayons. I'm back in kindergarten and I love crayons. Uh, you might put oil pastel or, you know what I mean? You, you, something new and you, you found something at the hardware store and you're, you're putting it on there, right? And then what do you use to write on all that stuff? Nothing. Nothing writes on oil. The Fude Ball is fantastic and this pen will write on dried acrylic paint. It, it writes on paint like, uh, like it's just awesome. Ooh, hello, that's wet. <laughs> You know, I can write, hello, right? So this writes wonderfully on dried paint, but if you've got anything that's not, you know, anything in addition to paint on there that's lumpy bumpy, uh, doesn't write on glue very good, uh, then you're, 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 you're stuck sometimes. So what this does, this fine line tip, is it turns any tube of my paint into a pen, okay? So the, you get two in a blister, there are, they're both the same size. People yesterday were saying on their videos, oh, there are two different sizes of nibs. No, they're not. They're, you get two of the same because frankly, you're gonna need six packs of these <laughs> because you're gonna need one on every color. Um, two of the same tip. Um, because my paint has a heavy body, uh, what we did was we made that tip pretty wide, okay? Because we don't want you to have um, carpal tunnel syndrome <laughs> trying to squeeze the paint we also made it quite short so there's less real estate up from the needle to push the paint through okay so it shouldn't be too bad to squeeze through okay um, when you put the lid back on what you have to do is there's a let me hold my finger still for you uh, you have to thread the needle that's in the lid into the needle that's on the bottle and then it really won't clog we live in Arizona Noel and I live in Arizona well, everything dries out there. Your baby wipes dry out. You have to add water to your wipes all the time. Um, and this just makes it so it won't dry out on you. Won't clog for you. You could put one of these tips on gel medium. And then if you were a die cutter and you have all those little dies, wafer dies, and you're, you're cutting the really thin, intricate things with Tim's, you know that little lattice the die of Tim's that I'm, I'm in love with, I love that thing. Um, you can put a little drops of glue on it with the, with the fine line tip, yeah? Okay, so then you shake your paint down into the needle, make sure it's down in, and then you squeeze and it becomes a pen. And you can make it bumpy. See how it has a little Hershey's Kiss uh, peak? Yeah. And if you don't want it to be peaky, if you tap the bottom, the lady in the last group told us this, it turns into a dome. Okay, it loses its little tip. Uh, that makes sense? And then yeah. you've got like a little, um, kind of like the little uh, acrylic, Enamel dots. dots. Enamel dots, yes. Those are fun. Um, so this just makes it easy to draw, doodle. You're know, like, oh, I wish, I wish I had flowers on top of that tissue paper that I gel mediumed on there. <laughs> now you can. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So they're super fun. Um, we were talking about what you do when the tube of paint runs out. Don't throw it away. Uh, cut the top of the tube off. There's enough paint on there for at least five more backgrounds. There's tons of paint. Um, you, you cut it apart. I have one here cut it where it went. And then you stick your brush in there. I, I just use it right then. I cut it out. I'm like, oh, got a lot of turquoise. I make five turquoise backgrounds. I, I bend the paint. Take this off, move it to a new tube. Okay? Because um, this will be fine. Just get the, get the excess paint. You should do that with your moisturizer as well. <laughs> Don't tell Bobby Brown that. She might not want you to know. No. Uh, you can use every little bit of that, of that, of that out there. I really want to demystify paint. I feel like sometimes people come to acrylic and they think, oh, I have to paint the Mona Lisa and, and paint is for artists. And I'm not an artist, I'm a poser. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just playing and having fun. And paint is versatile. It is one of the most versatile things that you can use and buy because the answer for what you can do for, with, with it is yes. Can you make a background? Yes. Can you paint on your photograph and alter your picture? Yes. Can you? You know, spill it on your carpet? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, simple, simple things. I also have been loving using it right on my stamps. So here's one of my new stamps from this set. I, think, I called it wood cuts because I think they look a little bit like a wood cut. And then go ahead and apply that acrylic. You can apply it with a brush. I feel like it's easier with the, the blending tool, but go ahead and glob it on there. Make it thick and delicious get more incarnations and somewhere on this table I've got a green one of those this is I spy oh found it and then I like to add one spray of water that you add, 
And the more it will look like you have watercolored piece. Go. There's a card for my mother-in-law. <laughs> Perfect. Done. Right. Make sure you always wash the paint off out of your, out of your stamp. Um, I, I don't wash much, but one thing that I do wash is my stamps if they have acrylic paint in them because it'll get into those grooves and then dry, and then you've got to get it out with a pen. Right. It's just such a hassle. So go ahead and wash it out as well. I had a couple questions yesterday about what you use uh, gel medium and gesso for. And I think that can be confusing for newbies as well. And just remember that gesso is underwear. <laughs> okay, gesso goes on first. And gesso makes it so your paint doesn't soak in too much. It, you know, keeps your paint the right color. It makes your paint move better on your piece. So I've gessoed this tag. How much gesso is on that tag? No. Not much. Paper thin bit of gesso. You don't need to glob it on. You don't need, you know, textural gesso unless you're doing some special project. Put it on with a palette knife, make it really thin, and that way when you're coming along and you're putting paint, it just spreads so easily. And yes, I do use my fingers all the time. And then the little baby wipe techniques that I really like to do, they only work if you've gessoed. So if you haven't gessoed, you can't do the removal, you can't do any of that. That makes sense? And it just makes a simple thing. White space is your friend. <laughs> Don't cover the whole thing, my friends. Um, and I think, you know, if you show people that as well, it, it, it's like, oh, I can do that. I can't paint the Mona Lisa. <laughs> but I can put it down a stencil and I can rub it with baby wipe, right? And it, and it makes it easy. And then I can take the fine line and I can add cute little circles. And then you've got a great background started that makes it super easy and not, and not intimidating at all for, for somebody who's, who's kind of afraid of paint as well. Um, the gesso is that primer. Now gel is glue. Let me say something about my gel. So Ranger has this great glue called multimedia. Multimedia will glue on something metal. It is thick and awesome. Uh, it's good stuff, right? You, you, you've used it, right? My gel is not that glue because they already have that glue. Why do the same glue? So my, my gel is for thin paper. So what I did, I, I said I wanted my gel super soft because I do a lot of jelly paper gluing, tissue stamping on tissue, because you know when you stamp on tissue and then gel it, the tissue disappears. So you can, you know, it's just a lovely technique. Um, have you ever put something thin on your project and then it's bubbly? You can't get it flat, you're using the wrong glue. The, gluing, the glue is the issue. So this, this glue is for perfect stick flat gluing of thin paper. That makes sense? So you need both. I use multimedium in my studio. That has, I, I need it. And then I use this. I've had people in class try to use this to even glue a tag onto a journal page. And they're like, oh, the tag's coming up. I'm like, oh, you can't use, can't use my gel for a tag. You need to use the collage glue stick or the multimedium. Um, but you want to use my gel if you're doing your jelly paper, thin tissue. I do my book paper. Uh, with this, nothing heavier than a piece of book paper, though. So, like yeah. magazine cutouts that we put in our art journal would be best with gel medium as opposed to something else. Too. Yeah, mag if this is perfect for magazine cutouts because you ever done it. And also make sure that you're gluing properly. Your glue goes on what? The page that you're going to glue on and on the magazine cutout. Okay. You need to. You don't stick dry to glue. You stick glue to glue. Okay. And then you burnish, and that's how you're going to get the the less fewer bubbles. I can't guarantee no bubbles and no wrinkles, but you'll be better if you, you're sticking glue to glue and then you burnish it, okay? And because people will sometimes look through my journals and they'll, they'll touch it and they're like, did you paint that? Oh, I'm like, no, that's glued in. It's glued in with the right glue, okay? That makes sense. Glazing medium isn't as sticky, so you don't want to glue with glazing medium because that's not glue. That's to thin down paint and keep it wet longer, okay? So the, all of these little mediums have their place. Um, the gesso is underwear for your art. You can get by without it, but something will chafe you. So you need you need to have your gesso for sure. Um, and then great little additions with the with the fine line. Anyone have questions? Want to try it? How do you um, clean your? You don't. Okay. Okay. You're you're gonna put this on the tip and leave it because inside this there's a valve. Okay. See that green thing right there? That's a little valve. It's tiny. If you disassemble that, oh my goodness. I mean, I can't imagine, I don't know. There's no bottle brush that's gonna get in there and really clean that out. So put it on and leave it. 
Um, you can switch colors, like I said. You have to squeeze one color out, and, and then the new color will come, and then it's, it's, so it'll be muddy for a minute or two, and then you're kind of wasting paint. Does that make sense? So my plan in Dean Wake Land is to just put it on and leave it on the color. Um, if you want to move it, it's possible. When they first sent me a prototype, I only had one, and so I moved it from color to color. It worked? Yeah, it worked. But don't ever take this off and leave it, because there's a lot of paint inside there, and then it'll, it really will dry. Okay, so I wouldn't try to wash it, put it on and leave it. If you think, oh, I need to use black, but it has a tip on it, take it off, squeeze it on your thing, and screw it back on. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, if you would like to try it, that's what these were, the last group having, trying the little fine line bits. So you're welcome to come and grab a needle tip and, and try it out. Cool. So that's my happy clap. Isn't it a happy clap? <laughs> <laughs> happy clap, happy clap. Yay, Yay. Yeah. so excited. Do you know how many different colors do you have in the paint? 16. 16 right now, yeah. More to come for sure, um, but 16, yeah. We just did the metallics and the black for the show. Okay, yeah. And they all tend toward the brights? Right now. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a child of the 80s. <laughs> Graduated from high school in 87. I would have neon if I, if I could. But yeah, right now they're bright. If you, I have umber, which if you add this to any of them, it kind of vintageifies them. Oh, let me mention one more thing. Over there in the middle of the booth, there is the Designer's Challenge. May did a beautiful piece over there. Go over to Designer's Challenge and take a look because we sent them an assortment of my acrylic, all these bright colors. Go look at some of them that are not bright. You know, so what they did is they used the umber and they kind of toned it down to be a little less <laughs> Madonna 1985, right? Um, so it, it, it's versatile for sure. Yeah, so uh, 12, 24 artists over there using my stuff all in a different way. I was so impressed. I can't wait to blog about all of those pieces over there. They're fantastic. So, yeah. Any other questions? You mentioned it, you don't mix the acrylics with water. Um, that you misted it. Yeah. What did that do? It it thinned it out. See? Okay. Okay. So it made so it so I didn't need to reload that stamp again. Um, it also made it look kind of faded. Um, but it, to me, more water than this, see how that's starting to look less like paint and more like watery down paint? So for me, this is hitting that threshold that if I want it to be that thin, I should turn to glazing medium. That makes sense? Um, but here was stamp full strength. Well, I added a little spray of water, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I did. Um, a little bit of water, because that this paint is so heavy. A little water, a little more water, and you can see the progression get thinner and thinner as it goes. But I think, gosh, there's kind of a lot of paint on that stamp. How much use can I get out of it? I don't waste my paint, I don't waste my ink. Um, unless I spill it on the carpet, which I do <laughs> all the time. Brand new house, two days in, I'm like, oh, oh no. Luckily I, you know, I got it off with the baby wipe. And then I ordered a massive mat. I just hadn't ordered the mat yet for the room. But. Oh, Oops. That could be product for craft. I know. Craft it carpet. was 60 inches by 60 craft inches too, you know. Carpet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't even, yeah. My, we know we're going to get that carpet out, but any other questions? No? no? Well, thank you so much for thank listening. You. Thank you, Dina. Appreciate it. Appreciate it a lot.